Yeah. Uh huh. It's the first. It's the first. It's the first episode. It's the first. Might be your last. But I'm looking for my first. First episode podcast. Welcome to First Episode Podcast, a cherry popping debrief of your next binge worthy television series. I'm your host, Motown Maurice. And I'm your guest host, Raj Jawa. What's up, Raj? How are you? I'm doing very good. I appreciate you having me on for this uh, for this podcast. Well, of course, I told you we had to have you back after you was on Sip and Chat Cafe. That was a great interview. How's your podcast doing? It's uh, doing good. It's doing good. We got some uh, some content creator competition. Um, Ooh, so nice. that's that's definitely uh, going. It's just all good to have uh, other people trying to raise awareness for uh, such a niche topic. That is pretty cool. This is like the content, like kinky kind of. Oh uh, yeah, I would say so. Yeah, they they're definitely they're a creator on OnlyFans, so they're kind of leaning into this being kind of a safe for work, but yet still leaning towards that uh, you know go buy my OnlyFans type <laughs> uh, content, but still answering questions and and obviously providing clearly a fan service to to people in the in the community. That is really good. It was really good that you came up with a, con- a contest for people to get involved and excited. It's really good. Yeah, for sure. Something to keep in mind for this podcast, potentially. We'll see. Absolutely. Thanks for inspiring us, Raj. Yeah, no, my pleasure. <laughs> my pleasure. Happy to do it. I know you always claim to not be much of a TV watcher, so I apologize to <laughs> uh, persuading you to watch some uh, of these shows. No, I think it's the opposite. I appreciate uh, getting the chance or being forced to watch TV <laughs> because it... Uh, it I I don't get to. And there's a lot of interesting things. I think it's really just the time commitment. I, I just would rather, I would rather sit and watch a three, maybe even a four hour movie uh, than maybe in like what, eight, eight episodes an hour each, eight hour TV yeah. show. It's a lot. It's it's quite a bit. And sometimes those those things don't wrap up. Yeah, you're, you're so right. And it is a commitment when you invest in a show. Absolutely. And us being of character, when we get when we get involved in something, you want to finish it to the to the end. 100%. <laughs> but it's hard to do that with shows cuz they just keep on going or they just just go into crazy town. For sure. I was going to say, I think too, sometimes we have an idea of where a show is going and we ho- maybe hope it goes that way too. And then they maybe disappoint us. May I think uh, I didn't watch Lost, but I feel like that was a lot of people's <laughs> perception of Lost. So, yeah, exactly. You get these big, huge mysteries, and you want to get to the end, and then it's like, Meh, yeah, man, what, why? Why did I do this? It's, <laughs> and and that feeling, it's like a void. Just they, it's like they take something from your soul because you put so much time into it, and you don't get anything back. It's true. It's true. <laughs> yeah, you want to get so you want to get like I feel like. Movies have a, a a tight and conciseness where it's just like, you know, they're made to, you know, have that beginning, middle and end. And you get that, you know, presumably most movies have moral lessons. So you get kind of whatever the writer, the director, the people who've put this film together are trying to get across. And I think maybe sometimes that gets lost in something as long as a TV show. But that all that said... TV shows are still amazing, and uh, there's so many amazing ones uh, out there. Television has come a long way. They have like a movie feel to them. 100%. Um, yeah. Years ago, you didn't get that. A lot of uh, movie stars didn't want to be a part of TV. Now movie stars, like they want to do TV because it's true. of the impact. And I think the show that we've watched that we're about to touch on has a little bit of everything in it. Uh, yeah, I would see that. I could see what you're saying there. Yeah, for sure. So why don't we just get into it? Sure. Today with Cherry Popping, Three Body Problem. A fateful decision in 1960s China echoes across space and time to a group of scientists in the present, forcing them to face humanity's greatest threat. The genres, fantasy drama, mystery thriller, science fiction. So Raj, what were your first impressions of this show? I really enjoyed it. It it reminded me of uh, shows, you know, maybe I'm being too simplistic, but it reminds me of a lot of shows that have mysteries within them uh, as kind of their grounding principle. Um, I mentioned Lost earlier, which again, I didn't watch, but I'm aware of the whole mystery and and stuff that goes on in that world. I did start watching at some point Manifest, but did not get that far, Mm -hmm. which is like a plane disappearing and then coming back some different time, you know, that kind of thing. So I really felt this, this 
show kind of fit in with that tradition of like, what's going on? Um, and the, the twist is maybe seemingly this kind of, uh, uh, you know, a split between science and religion, which could be an interesting twist on maybe a formula that has been done before, mm -hmm. um, but in a different way. Yeah, I do like the twist on on science and religion a lot. And it leads to the theme and the age old question is, are we alone in the universe? Is there a God? That's the theme that really stuck out to me mm -hmm. that stimulates really interesting conversation. Do you, I mean, do you think we are alone in the universe? Like what, <laughs> what is that answer for you? Or, or is it a spiritual answer or is it both? Do you think both of things are possible? You know, I want to believe that we are not alone. It's interesting. When it comes to science and when it comes to God, I believe as a scientist, it's okay to not believe in God. They have the the judgment of, of like, hey, there is no proof that there is a God. But as a, a religious person who believes in God, you have to believe in science. See, that's an interesting, it's an interesting, because I feel like, and this is not important, we don't have to get on, on this um, tangent, but I feel like on a political level, when we think about religion, it can't, it, there, there's a, 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 a desire to not accept that. Mm -hmm. There's like, it, it has to be a divide between science and religion. Um, and you're, what you're pitching to me sounds like it doesn't have to be that way, or maybe it even shouldn't be that way. If you believe in God, then you believe in all the laws that God created. You believe that the the law of attraction, you believe in the law of relativity, mm -hmm. you believe in science and physics. God created these things, right? For sure. So it, it doesn't make sense that there is a divide. <laughs> that's interesting. No, I think that's very interesting. It is an interesting perspective. And for sure, definitely um, seems very important to the show. Like from this episode, it's hard to know exactly how much, mm -hmm. um, but it's clear from that first scene with uh what's her name Yi and her father um i guess being pariahed and, and worse being being beaten to death mm -hmm. um and that continues even to the point of you know near the end of the episode where uh she's confronted by one could only guess like some kind of maybe zealot, but we don't know. We mm -hmm. actually don't know. She's just a mysterious person who helped light her cigarette yeah. and said, hey, you see numbers, right? Yeah. Uh, you don't want them to get to zero. <laughs> um, so yeah, there, there's something going on there that it really, I mean, it really, that's the thing. It really draws you into the show um, in a way that maybe if it was just another old mystery, oh, the plane's missing and it came back later. It's like, eh, you know, I don't know. Like, I, I don't know what the, you really want to find out what's happening, I feel mm -hmm. like. Um, and that it really is central to that religion science question in this show specifically. Yeah. That opening scene was just really impactful. Uh, brutal. Very brutal. And it seems like that, that makes me want to believe like there's a greater energy, there's a greater source, there's a greater being out there in a the universe than us because we're just despicable. The things that we do to each other sure. just for trying to advance or study, we, we can't be that special. <laughs> the way we just treat each other is just really deplorable. For sure. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's an interesting takeaway for sure. I, I definitely could see that. And it, it that ties into really what I, I mean, I, I there's a definitely a couple of themes here, but I think one of the strongest ones that stand out for me is... Kind of, you know, it's a little simplistic to say it's a theme of betrayal, but it certainly is a lot of betrayal in the show. Mm -hmm. um, but it's also like at the, at, at, you know, someone trying to survive. Um, like it, it is betrayal to, you know, have uh, uh, Yi's mother um, basically denounce uh, her her husband on stage uh, in front of everyone, and then also later in the in the show in the episode sign uh, that document uh, denouncing him again and his studies, um, the, the 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 physics of it all, and yet you could see why. And there's there's surely something to come out of all that because mm -hmm. there's a lot of interplay and the mother's still alive and in, involved. Um, there's something to all of that for sure. I don't know what, but it's definitely um, an interesting thing to think about. I, I wanted them to really talk about the, um, you know, betrayal aspect more as the show progresses, ideally, because it is such a pivotal aspect to... Uh, 
her growth as a character, the mother's growth as a character, which is not seemingly a major character now, but maybe will be um, as the show goes forward. Betrayal. Is that something that you've ever experienced in your personal life? Um, I, you know, I, I only think in more ethereal terms. Like, I, I think, I mean, thankfully, we don't live under an oppressive, oppressive regime in which we have to d make uh, such decisions where we do betray people, um, in, in such of an ultimate sacrifice as, as losing their life, um, for, for their ideas and their, and their, um, values, their virtues. Um, but certainly I think, I think betrayals in our world tend to be, and I, I'm speaking for myself, but, but hopefully, um, they don't extend beyond, you know, kind of, I think they stem from our expectations and then also like those expectations not being met um, a lot of times based on communication mm -hmm. or, or a, more, more clearly a lack of communication generally. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I think, I think there's a, I think it's a little hard to then call it betrayal when it's just like, Oh, we didn't talk about this, but like, um, yeah, I think that's kind of the extent of betrayal in a lot of our, I guess, more privileged life of this not yeah. oppressive regime uh, of the show. Um, that's what comes to mind. What What would you do? You, could do you think you've had betrayal in your life? I'm sorry to turn it on you, but, <laughs> no, no, uh, but I'm glad I'm, curious. You, I'm glad you posed the question on me. I had uh, and I and I like how you identified it with communication because mm. the the example I'm about to give <laughs> is all to do with communication. Remember when I lived in the garage? Certainly, yeah. Yeah. So there was a like a two month period where I allowed a young lady to live with me. Okay. And as soon as she got in, I realized she had uh, temper issues. It was bad. So we realized it wasn't going to work out. So she was trying to find a place. And every, every, every day was something. She's mad on the phone. She's mad on the computer. And I just, I, it was a small space. Long story short, it got to the point where I was talking to my landlady out in the front of the garage. And I wasn't trying to throw her out, the young lady, but I was asking my landlady, look, you rent out other parts of the house. Can you please put her in another part of the part of the house? As I'm talking to her, I turned around. The, there was the girl looking at me with her arms folded. Mm. She walked into the garage. I walked in after. I knew it was so I was like, oh gosh, something's about to happen. I walk in after, but I played it cool. I said hi. She said hi. And I kid you, like poultry guy, she her eyes rolled and she was like, You betray me. And I'm like, what are you talking about? You're talking about me behind your back. I was like, I was trying to get you in another. It was just, it was that. It was terrible. It's a lot. Yeah. No, absolutely. <laughs> it, 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 that, and that's exactly what I mean. I mean, these seem like trivial situations, especially after the fact when we can laugh about it. Yeah. But, but yeah, that is kind of the, uh, the betrayals we do have on a more day to day basis, or hopefully not every day, but, you know, <laughs> when they do come up. Yeah. But they are great for uh for themes in television. Certainly. You, they know I how agree. to maximize those dramas there. <laughs> Absolutely. Which really made this a really good show. I mean, I like the I mean, some of the concepts of, you know, space and time, past and future are familiar in other shows. But other than that, this was uh quite original to me. Yeah, I mean, I can't think of anything. Like I say, the themes, the the idea of having a mystery mm -hmm. um, certainly are familiar ideas. But yeah, there's nothing that really, you know, tied this in. Maybe it's too early. Then, you know, as it goes forward, there'll be more uh, clear, like, parallels to yeah. other shows. But, but yeah, for now, uh, it's really difficult to say what that is. You have these... Um, weird mysterious numbers that people see um i guess persistently um you have people you know taking their own life i guess because of these numbers or or somewhat related to the numbers yeah um yeah so it's really hard to at this point say like ah oh, it's like it's just like that show um and maybe it won't be maybe it will be uh completely uh unique and uh and uh, fresh idea that it has no parallels. For me, the entertainment potential is high. I watched the episode with Atara. She's on vacation right now. Nice, nice. Thank you for filling in. <laughs> <laughs> of course. And we both liked it and enjoyed it a lot. So I, um, from this first episode, I think they did a really good job. And I'll be watching more. How, you plan to watch more? I don't know. I mean, I definitely want to. I'm like, I'm intrigued. Um, I might just not. 
in in favor of other shows I might uh, just commit to further. But yeah, we'll see. Because I do. I do want to find out what's happening. But it's one of those things that's just like, uh, I think we talked about at the top yeah. uh, about like, is this mystery going to be worth it? Is this, is this mystery truly going to be worth it? Should I just read about it later? <laughs> like on, on, on a Wikipedia article, like, ah, yes. Yeah. Well, you know, this is based on a book. I don't know if you know that it's a, it's a trilogy book okay. by a uh, science fiction Chinese author. Hmm. So they got good source material. That so is if nice. you don't yeah. want to watch the the show, you can read the books. I will say I appreciate that it's not uh, it's not a necessarily a Western book because that is that is I think maybe uh, often a, a breath of fresh air mm-hmm. in a way that like anime often is. Mm-hmm. You know, there's uh, there's often themes and um, maybe a rawness that I think uh, other cultures ha- will bring to their media that we're more shot we're more like weary of and like eh, I don't want it that's too violent or that's too sexual or that's too you know something I wanted to touch on <laughs> your comments on commitment we're committed individuals because you know we like to finish things and get it done yeah but I've come to a point where I realize it's okay to not finish certain things I actually I probably finish more shows than I do video games growing up as a kid you had to beat the game it was like bragged right sure but I've given myself the okay to not finish certain video games and I think it's just how I play games some games I play a little bit and sometimes I return sometimes I don't but I always enjoy myself for sure and I think it's okay to give yourself the permission not to finish a show. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, I've definitely been embracing that with the streaming <laughs> on terms of like not finishing games. So yeah, I, I'm not, I, like I said, I, I started watching, I don't remember, probably sometimes when I was in Boston, watching Manifest. Uh, I watched a little bit of OA when I was in Boston. And yeah, these are these are all shows that are really compelling and and truly I would keep watching them but to be honest I'll sit and watch Law and Order because it also is sometimes equally compelling in a way even if I've seen it before just because it it's those it's whatever formula of TV it's it's all right there to get you um to sit and watch it um and, yeah I don't know and you're speaking of Tara's language right now because sure. she loves Law and Order and another reason she watches it because it's just familiar territory to her that's yeah you that's know? that's a good I I used to do that with American Dad and Family Guy and whatever I had them on a play Less just uh, over and over, basically. And it makes sense. Sometimes you just, you don't want to think too much when you're watching a show. Right. But if you're watching something familiar, it's just, hey, you know, you're relaxed. You can kind of multitask while you're watching it. So, no, I get it. I kind of do that with South Park. Sure, sure. (laughs) Yeah. Which is pretty cool. So, as far as cherries are concerned, how many cherries would you give your first episode experience? Oh, man. Given that I've... Oh man, the fact now that I, now that I think about it, because I've never given cherries before, I'm like, oh my god. Um, I think I want to give this three cherries to really? start with. Three out of five cherries. Wow, wow, wow! You're stingy on your cherries. <laughs> <laughs> I've always been stingy on my cherries. Uh, uh, Tara's a little more liberal. As far as my rating is concerned. I did enjoy the episode. There are those questions, like, are they going to guide you on a merry-go-round later on? Because there are so many questions right now to answer. But it's, I, I will, I will give it a strong four cherries, four, uh, even four and a half. But I'll just say four. Sure, I'll say four for now because I thought it was good, and I'm definitely interested in what, what else is to offer. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, <laughs> I like that. Three Body Problem was released on March twenty first. 2024. There's one season available and eight episodes. The average duration of each episode is one hour and it is available for viewing on Netflix. The IMDb rating is 7.5. So Raj, we've only watched one episode. Mm -hmm. And as soon as an episode or season drops, people are wondering, is there going to be a second season? Well, I'm here to announce that they have a second season in play. Actually, multiple seasons are under development. Okay. Yeah. So that, that means the audience liked it. It, it had yeah. good impressions, not only with us, but the audience. I'm surprised to hear, I won't spend too much time on this. I'm surprised to hear Netflix is making a show beyond two seasons. <laughs> That's like the running joke of, of sure. this podcast because Netflix is always canceling shows. We'll see. We'll see when we get to 2027 if they make that third season. <laughs> They're going to be like, ah, oh, you know what? Nah. <laughs> you solved the mystery. It's fine. You know, we'll see what happens. So let's just hope they don't like wear it out. Yeah. 
It's yeah. true. You know, that's greed. So many shows, as we've touched, touched on already, could have concluded much sooner. But it's greed. It's the money and greed that, that keeps them to keep chirking out, you know, more shows. Absolutely. <laughs> Those are our thoughts on Three Body Problem. Thank you for trusting us. We are honored to be your first. For more information about this podcast and more, please visit MotownMaurice.com.